everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update this evening. I trust and hope that you're doing great. And we're going to be looking at the latest for Tropical Storm Philippe, which is very disheveled this evening. All that activity is displaced well away from its center in the Eastern Caribbean. And we'll also be talking about the next areas that we should watch as we're going to be heading into next week for potential developments. So we'll be talking about that as well later in this video. But our immediate concern is Philippe. So let us now go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery beginning with the Caribbean generally so we want to look at what is happening for surrounding areas before narrowing down to the cyclone so here we can see lots of showers and thunderstorms developing across various spots parts of Central America even going down to northern South America as well and then for the greater Antilles and near the Cayman Islands so for Cuba Jamaica over in some spots in Hispaniola even across the Bahamas and near the Turks and Caicos Islands there is some activity moving through as well and then that new blob of convection over parts of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands uh, that is growing there. So that is all in association with Philippe. All this activity in association with Philippe. For the ABC Islands, a bit of convection in the area, nothing too much. You can let me know if you guys actually receive some rainfall. But uh, let's take a closer look at the system. So here we are and uh, the system, the center of the storm has actually made its way out of the Caribbean. But there we can see all that displaced activity in the eastern part of the basin so it is not over just yet what we're going to see happening is that there might still be some periods of heavy downpours especially across the northeastern islands so islands such as anguilla going southward to montserrat including saint kitts and nevis the british virgin islands there could be four to eight inches with maximum amounts up to 12 inches and other areas such as saint martin saint bartholomew uh saba saint eustatius would also be included there is going to be that possibility of those additional heavy downpours which can actually uh, induce flooding as we head through the rest of today and into tomorrow and then for the remainder of the leeward islands heading to antigua barbuda guadalupe and dominica there could be up to around one to four inches of rainfall anywhere within that range there could be some additional rainfall there and then for the u.s virgin islands and northeast puerto rico there could be two to four inches of rainfall so please stay safe the storm is not over just yet yes the center has moved out but as we have been seeing uh, and as i have been mentioning all that activity is displaced from the center and is that activity all that convection that is bringing the impacts and so uh let's now go ahead and move on to the latest cone forecast from the national hurricane center and here we can see it so the maximum sustained winds are 45 miles per hour some slight weakening and it is moving up to the northwest at 12 miles per hour now earlier there was a brief tropical storm watch in place for the british virgin islands but that has been discontinued again uh, there is still that possibility of all that flooding and even those landslides as a result of philippe and we saw what it has done to other islands such as barbados with all that thunderstorm activity yesterday the intense flooding in guadalupe dominica and uh, even going to saint lucia as well i saw the videos from you guys i have been seeing the comments as well now as we're going to be heading through the rest of this week the system is going to continue to make its way generally up to the north and could make a very close approach to bermuda as we head into friday so it could induce those rough seas those strong winds even some periods of heavy rainfall but by that time it will be losing its tropical cyclone characteristics it will be transitioning into an extra tropical or post tropical cyclone uh, as it makes its way further up north especially as it reaches those cooler waters which will help the system to further weaken and dissipate and then as we're going to be heading into the early part of the new week take a look at how quickly it's going to be making its way up north and then uh it could bring some additional impacts to those rough seas those strong winds and even some rainfall activity to portions of maine and atlantic canada new brunswick nova scotia so uh, if you're in those areas guys you want to be on the lookout for that something a bit similar to what lee did but the system here uh philippe is likely to be much weaker than lee so that is what is expected and let's go on to some model data very quickly we can see that for the track guidance there is some decent agreement on this happening a couple models want to take the system a bit further to the west but the majority agrees on that continuous track up to the north before the system eventually makes its way in and then it will dissipate now as it relates to intensity it might try to strengthen a little bit but it is not expected to intensify much because it will continue to feel impacts from that shear as we have seen the shear has been impacting the storm but Philippe has been very resilient
resilient and maintain those 50 mile per hour winds for quite some time before it actually weakened a bit earlier today. So uh, it is not over yet again for especially the Northeastern Islands, the Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, and even uh, parts of the Northern Leeward Islands. There could still be a lot of heavy rainfall at times and that can trigger some more flooding. Now let's go ahead and talk about that potential system or those potential systems rather down the road. And firstly, we're looking at the Eastern Pacific. This is the seven day outlook that we see there is Tropical Storm Lydia, which uh, is not a problem for anyone, might eventually make it to hurricane status. It's going to remain out in the open waters. And then that shaded red area indicating a high chance of seeing some development. Now this is going to be key here because models are showing that we could have something formed just offshore off Mexico and then uh, it moves inland and whatever is left of it makes its way into the Gulf and tries to reform into something there. Models have been very consistent about that. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at them. Here we're looking at the GFS first and there we have the forecast time. So this is as we're going to be heading into uh, next week and there we can see all that activity in the Gulf. Not seeing anything too defined in terms of a tropical cyclone there, but we're definitely seeing all that increase in moisture and then take a look at that, a compact system continuing westward headed toward the Caribbean. So uh, I'm giving that a very low chance right now. I'm not doubting development in the main development region, but in terms of a hurricane headed to the Caribbean, I'm not expecting that for now. And actually, as we head further out in time, accuracy tends to decrease. Going on to the Euro model now. So this is as we head to Friday, the 13th Friday of next week. There we can see Euro also showing all that increase in activity from that system over in the Eastern Pacific. And uh, it is actually attached to that front out there. And we're not seeing anything actually forming in the main development region, but there we can see all that increase in moisture. So uh, next we have the Canadian model, which is also consistent about seeing all that moisture and maybe some development of a weak system in the Gulf. Gulf of Mexico and with all that increase in moisture that can actually induce a lot of rainfall across some Gulf Coast states. So if you're there you want to be on the lookout for that. I'm not saying that there's a hurricane or a definitive storm heading your way but uh, it is worth watching for the next several days and I have been seeing some consistency on this potentially happening. There we even see two systems out there in the main development region. The one further east as we can see visibly stronger. We see a pressure of 1,003 millibars suggesting a tropical storm. And then finally, the icon model, one of the really good ones. We can see that icon is also showing that we will see development of a future tropical wave to emerge off the African coast. Not seeing anything in the Gulf just yet, but there we can definitely see all that moisture offshore off of Mexico. So there we're seeing some consistency with our models in terms of that potential system and even that future wave to emerge off Africa. I actually mentioned this in one of the previous updates, but recently my, uh, my videos have been focused on Philippe, of course. It is that current threat. So uh, as we're going to be heading into the next couple of days, we should have a better idea of what is ahead. And uh, actually looking at this wide view here, this infrared satellite imagery of the entire North Atlantic, we can see some activity out in the main development region. So that little cluster of convection right there is in association with a tropical wave. And so is that one close to the Cabo Verde Islands. So two tropical waves are out there, neither currently marked as a disturbance to watch. But uh, of course, I'm here to keep you guys posted. And that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you this evening so i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i can and as always remember to be weatherwise